part five as we are working our way through biological psychology. We're going to look at different ways we can study the brain today. Um, we begin with the number one most awesome way to study the brain is unfortunately by people who've had accidents. Um, when people have accidents, we can see how those accidents affected their brain. There's a guy who every psychology student needs to know, Phineas Gage, one of the most famous accidents um, that happened in psychology. Phineas was working on a railroad, driving spikes into the ground, putting, blowing up with dynamite, and the thing shot back up, it was like pointy, shot back up right through his face, went through his eye, out through the top of his head, all right, it didn't kill him. And so we were able to gather a lot of information based on what part of his brain was injured in the accident and what, how is it, he was affected afterwards. For instance, he lost a lot of his personality. He became, uh, lost a lot of his social filter, uh, started to swear a lot, was very, uh, had no matters around ladies. And so it talks a lot about what your frontal lobe's good for because that's where the injury occurred. And we look at his skull and his brain it's still today. Afterwards, this is an example of that. An additional way of doing it is uh, with what's called a brain lesion. And lesion just literally means to destroy. So a brain lesion is when a brain tissue is destroyed. Um, that brain tissue can be destroyed uh, due to some sort of disease or problem, or it could be destroyed on purpose for a, a scientific experiment, a psychological experiment. Um, we usually don't do brain lesions on human beings because that's unethical. Um, we do oftentimes, uh, not often, but we do sometimes do brain lesions on animals, such as uh, rats, um, to see what happens. So for instance, a brain lesion in a rat, by killing a certain part, you know, they've got their little brain here, by killing a certain part of their brain, um, destroying that tissue, that might cause them to overeat, so it might not tell them when they're hungry. And if you did a different part, over here, that might tell them that they never need to eat because they're always feel hungry. So doing brain lesions tells us that different parts of our brain help regulate different things in our body. Um, some more advanced things that we talk about that we you may or may not have uh, heard of these things. You may have even experienced one in your life. The first is an EEG, which is an electroencephalogram. An electroencephalogram basically measures your wave, your brain wavelengths, okay? They put all these little electrodes, all these little electrodes on your on your head. Okay, I can't even draw. And all these little things get little bits of information, right? They're so small and so powerful now that they can measure the electrical impulse from one neuron, which is tiny, tiny, tiny. And <clears throat> takes all these electrical impulses, blocks out the anything that's not supposed to be it's not supposed to be looking at and when you're doing something that it's trying to study it analyzes those wavelengths and that can tell us a lot about what's going on in your brain at that moment uh, an additional way is called a cat scan or today it's actually much more commonly referred to as a ct scan it used to be called a cat scan computerized axial tomography um, today it's called a ct scan um, CT scan is basically an x-ray of your brain. It's basically an x-ray. And it's good to tell us when there's been brain damage, when there's part of our brain that's damaged. It doesn't necessarily tell us what's being activated, what's being hurt, but it gives us a picture of your brain and tells us what's being damaged. You, this, I think this is a picture of a, of a CT scan machine. They actually all look pretty much like this. You go into this big tube thing, you lie on this and it sucks you in that way and you have to lay real still why whatever happens happens um, whatever method they're using a PET scan positron emission tomography a PET scan looks uh, at glucose 
your brain, right, loves glucose. All, every, all the food that you eat eventually gets turned into glucose and your brain uses that as energy. Those neurons in your brain are like little glucose hogs. They want to use glucose. So whenever something's activated, that little part of your brain is going to be using up more glucose because it's working. And so um, when you're using a PET scan, they might ask you to think of sitting at the ocean. And the part of your brain that's um, activated when you're sitting at the ocean thinking of a good thing will start to light up and we'll get we'll actually be using up more glucose at that moment because that's uh, which which being activated and so that it tells what parts of your brain are being activated at different times based on the glucose that's being consumed by the neurons in your brain pretty cool uh, the last two both have MRI in the name uh, magnetic resonance imaging uh, magnetic resonant imaging again is actually a pretty cool thing. You have these little atoms in your brain; they're spinning around, right? They're going all this way and that. And so, what magnetic re magnetic resonance imaging does is it makes all these little atoms line up, and then it sends a signal, and it disorients these atoms. And then, when these atoms go back to where they were and how they were moving, it tells us what part of your brain was being activated all right and so your brain has always has magnetic uh, wavelengths going through it electrical wavelengths going through it and this just makes it uh, evident to see what's what's happening what's being this is a picture of a little bit more advanced which is called a functional magnetic resonance imaging at fmri and what this one does see how this so without the color here this is a MRI, right? Very detailed, you can see. Um, really cool. A functional MRI actually takes a MRI and it takes a real quick picture in succession. So it takes one and then right, right again it takes another. And when it does that, it, met, it sees the blood flow to the different regions of your brain. So it's actually looking at the blood flow and the oxygen right because blood has oxygen in it so it's looking actually looking at the oxygen levels and oxygen rushes to the parts of the brain that are being activated kind of like the PET scan looked at glucose this is looking at oxygen kind of the same idea and so depending on what part of your brain is being activated you know it takes a thing one picture then immediately another picture and shows the changes and those changes it uh, colors and tells us that that part of your brain is being activated so these are the most important for uh, this class to know um, fMRI, MRI, PET scan, CT scan, and then an EEG. And if you know those and kind of what they do, you're going to be all right. Thank you.